Welcome. We are with the Fadil Storytelling Theatre. And uh, the first story is. Well, this is my story. The first story has my favourite line in all of storytelling in it. Hmm. I wonder if you know which one it is. Oh, I'm ruder than that. There was once. There was once a princess who lived with her father the king and her mother the queen. Now her mother had very high ideals and her father was a little stuffy. And they were forever going up to her and saying, you do know the kings of France marry their daughters at seven, don't you? Why, well, I think that's terrible. That's You've been marriageable age for quite a while now. <sighs> and she could bear it no longer. I'm not interested in boys, I'm only interested in sewing. I'm sick of this, I'm going to find somewhere they can't bother. So she went right up to the very, very top of the castle. Ah, oh, yes, these stairs are so steep, no one older than me will be able to make it. And, oh, look at the view here. The windows are all around. I can see the tops of the trees and the birds and the view. Oh, this is lovely. And the light is perfect for my embroidery. And so she would sit there embroidering every afternoon. <laughs> and she noticed something else in the windows. Oh, the birds. The birds, they're so lovely. At one time. Now, he would have called himself a dove, but I might have called him a pigeon. <laughs> Came flying to the window ledge and looked at her with almost human eyes. Oh, a snow white dove, how and she beautiful. picked him up and put him to, his breast, to her breast. Oh, and she dove. said, and he said, Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Have a basin. A silver basin filled with milk. Here, and tell no one. Oh yes, yes, I will, and I won't. Uh, as appropriate, yes, of course. And so the next day, the princess had a basin of silver, silver, of silver, filled with milk, and in fluttered the pigeon, splash, straight into the basin, and it came out. The most handsome young man she had ever, ever seen. I thought I wasn't interested in boys, but God. <laughs> I, I, I am a prince, if that helps. Oh, perfect. I'm a princess. And she didn't sew that afternoon. <sighs> Rather, they sat and they talked and they laughed and they talked and they gossiped and they took the time to fall properly, irrevocably. In love. Now, at about five, as the sun was beginning to set, he said, Now I really have to go. Oh. And you, I can come back tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. But you must tell no one oh. I have been here. No, I won't. I won't. Under any pretext. No, I promise I won't. Well, the next day at breakfast, her mother had had enough. Oh. My dear! Yes. My dear! Yes, my mother was. My people from France marry their daughters at 14. Oh. I have put all the names of the eligible princes in this hat. No, Mama. Do you I... want to pick one out, shall I? No, I mean, all these men, I've met them at balls and things. I mean, oh, well, his socks, you can smell at 50 paces, and oh, and he's got, oh, dear, well, I don't know what he does with his ears, I really don't. And, I mean, and he's got no manners whatsoever. He only thinks of horses, halters, and harnesses. No, Mama. You must marry one of them. No. I met them, and I don't like them. I'm not interested. And the princess turned to her father. Oh, please, Papa, can I wait just somewhat longer? I've got a really enormous tapestry I want to finish. Before. All right. I'll wait until you've finished, Betty Tapestry. Thank you, Papa. Well, what with one thing and another, with talking to the prince, and with unpicking the tapestry every evening. I'm sure I've got this bit wrong. Yes. The tapestry never seemed to progress until her mother had had enough. I have looked at your tapestry. It is actually less complete now than it was when we made the bargain. Oh, Mama, I, uh, I just keep getting one particular bit slightly wrong. And... I've had enough. Where's that hat? Oh, no. Not the hat. And the princess turned to her father. Oh, please, Papa, no. no. I've had enough. I, the king, put on my crown, 
And today is the day we will choose who you get married to. No, I can't marry any of these men because I already have someone. Oh, well, if you already have someone, tell me all about it. If he's not a prince, I'll make him one. No, he... I can't... I can't tell you about it. Well, then, we no. will have to choose.
bars, and everyone must pay for their bars by telling a story. How will you get the bar? Who will pay for it? You will. And, and who will get the money? You'll get the money back because if the story is good enough, or interesting enough, or bold enough, or original enough, they have to pay a gold piece. So most people will have to pay. And but I'll get to hear an awful lot of very boring stories. Yes, and also all the secrets. I'll get to hear any news if there is word of him anywhere. I will get to hear it. All right, if you want. So they built the most magnificent bathhouse. And every day the princess would sit in the vestibule of the bathhouse and she listened to really, really boring stories. Why did the chicken cross the road? I've heard this one before. Next! Gold piece, please. Next! Anyway, that is why the cow jumped over the moon. No, that's not good enough, and I don't believe it either. Gold piece, please. Next! But sometimes. A story was half way interesting. The Adidas Mikroba! That is rather good. Yes, that, that's pretty good. All right, you, you can have a bath three. Off, off you go. And rumour spread throughout the kingdom, even to the poor areas of the great city. And in the poorest area, there was a, a scullery maid who lived with her mother. Her mother was a washerwoman. And they were always dirty, for she worked in an inn. Oh. And she came in one day and said, Do you know what I want, Mother? What do you want, my lovely? What, are, what is it? I got all itchy. I want a bath. We're all all itchy and we're all killed for a bath. But we can't afford it, lovely. We can't afford it. Likes it. They say if something interesting happens to me, you get a bath for free. Oh, well, we're so poor. Nothing interesting is ever like these what I do ask, my lovely. Don't, don't hang your heart. If you're poor, life's boring. No. Indeed, every day is the same. Don't hang your art on it. Well, the next day, she happened to go home really late, just before 12, and she'd gone past the fighting cop, when suddenly she saw a little figure appear in the street. It was a little rooster in a top hat. Oh, I'll we'll get back to the princess. I'll we'll get back to the princess. They'll be waiting their bell. They'll be waiting their bell. I'll we'll get back to the princess. Ha! Ah. And as she looked, the rooster went down one road, turned right, went down the next road, and then went nowhere in particular. And she followed it, down the road, turned right, and went nowhere in particular, to a little low door on the wall. And the rooster opened the door and went inside. And moonlight streamed out on the rooster's face. As it went inside, she saw the princess, the servant maid. Birds fly down. And they seem to be taking a bath in a great bowl of milk. There you are, your highnesses. Good evening to you all. Well, I think that's interesting enough. So the next day, she went to the bathhouse to try it out. You see, I saw, I saw a rooster. A rooster? Yeah, a rooster. And it carried a basin of milk to a moonlit garden where lots of birds flew down and he called them your highness. Really? Oh, where that was a bath? Oh, yes, of course. And, I, and my mother? Oh, absolutely. But three baths for life. But, but can you take me there to this oh, place? Oh, yeah, tell me the fighting cock. If he's there, I can find him. Oh, thank you. I'll go and have a bath, and then I'll, I'll meet you at the crossroads. So, the next night, there they were at the crossroads by the fighting cock, when the rooster came by. And they saw it strutting down the road, and they followed it down the road, turned to the right, and then nowhere in particular to the little low door. Oh. And the rooster went inside, and the girl went inside too, for she was small enough. And she turned and said, It's a moonlit garden. Oh, yes, it is. And she said, Do you want to milk through? Oh, yes, please. I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit well fed. And they squeezed oh. and they pushed the princess through oh. the little door. And she found herself. young men had gone off, but they had bathed in the basin of milk first, shouting, It's all for us! It's all for us! Not for that one. For he was the one who was betrayed, who fell in love with a girl, and she betrayed him. And all of them had turned into young men and gone arm in arm into the garden. And the girl looked and she saw a sad-eyed dog. Oh, my love, my love. With human love. eyes. And she 
It's okay. And she gave me a huge hug. I'll always love you. I'm so sorry. And suddenly, there was a young man oh. standing by her. And he laughed. Oh in charge of home. They were lost only until I was found in the garden. Oh. And once I was found, oh. I will be free. And they squeezed and they pushed and they shoved him through the door. Just as dawn rose and the dawn, dawn faded. Let's go back to the palace. And they went back to the palace and there was the king having breakfast. Papa! Oh, but that's not a fine man, you chap. Yes, this is him. This is the oh. prince I was talking about. All right, you can marry him. Uh, who's your friend? Thank you. Oh, she's the young woman that told me how to find him. Is she going to be my maid or yours? She's going to be my maid, Papa. Behave. And, and, and we should be married. Oh, yes, tomorrow. Oh, last. And so, Papa. the next day, they were due to be married. And the princess was being dressed in her finest when her new servant maid turned to her and said, But you're so lovely. Can you tell me the secret of your loveliness? Oh, my. There is only one secret to beauty. One word. It is happiness.